Good day students, welcome to our lesson this week in Pre-Calculus. In this session, we're going to discuss sequences and series. First, for the arithmetic series, an arithmetic series is the sum of a sequence a sub n, where n is equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on in which each term is computed from the previous one by adding or subtracting a constant d. The pattern goes like this. a, a plus d, a plus 2d, a plus 3d, and so on. So the formula for the nth term is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, where a sub n is the n term of the series, a sub 1 is the first term of the sequence, and d is the common difference. For example, find the 7th and 8th terms of the arithmetic sequence 4, 7, 10, 13, and so on. So we get the common difference by subtracting the second term by the first term or by subtracting the second from the third term or by subtracting the third term from the fourth term and so on. Since 7 minus 4 equals 3, 10 minus 7 equals 3, and 13 minus 10 is also 3, therefore, the common difference is 3. Given are the first four terms, the first, second, third, and fourth term. So for us to get the fifth term, so we add 3 to the fourth term, so we're going to get 16 as the fifth term. Plus 3 again, 19 for the sixth term, plus 3 again, 21 for the seventh term, plus 3 to get the eighth term, and that's 24. So, the 7th and 8th terms are 21 and 24, respectively. Second example, find the 30th term of the arithmetic sequence 4, 7, 10, 13, and so on. So, we have the same arithmetic sequence from the first example. Actually, we can do the method that we have done in the first example, which we can continuously add 3 to the terms to get the 30th term. But this time, let us make use of the given formula. The first thing to do to solve this problem is to determine the given. So n is equal to 30, since we will be finding the 30th term. a sub 1 is 4, the first term. d is 3 or the common difference. So we're looking for a sub n. For the solution, make use of the formula. A sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Then substitute the values of n, a sub 1, and d. So we particularly, we will be looking for the 30th term. So we will be writing a sub 30 equals 4 plus 30 minus 1 times 3. So 30 minus 1 is 29. That's why we're going to have a sub 30 equals 4 plus 29 times 3. And 29 times 3 is 87. a sub 30 equals 4 plus 87, which results to 91. a sub 30 equals 91. So 91 is the 30th term of the arithmetic sequence 4, 7, 10, 13, and so on. Another example, find the 54th term of the arithmetic sequence 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. The given, n is equal to 54, the first term is equal to 5, and the common difference is 2. 7 minus 5 is 2, 9 minus 7 is 2, 11 minus 9 is 2. And we will be looking for a sub n. 
So for the solution, use the formula again to get the n term of the arithmetic sequence. Substitute the values of n, a sub 1 and 2. We're going to have a sub 54 equals 5 plus 54 minus 1 times 2. 54 minus 1 is 53. 53 times 2 is 106. And 5 plus 106 is 111. This means that the 54 term of the given arithmetic sequence is 111. Example 4. Find the 26 term of the arithmetic sequence 88, 78, 68, 58, 48, 38, 28, and so on. As you can see, the terms are decreasing. So this means that our common difference is negative. 78 minus 88 is negative 10. 68 minus 78 is negative 10. 28 minus 38 is negative 10. So the given n is equal to 26. A sub 1 or the first term is 88. The common difference is negative 10. So we will be solving for A sub n. In this case, A sub 26 equals 88 plus 26 minus 1 times negative 10. 26 minus 1 is 25. 25 times negative 10 is negative 250. So now we have A sub 26 equals 88 minus 250, which is negative 162. So A sub 26 is equal to negative 162. Negative 162 is the, is the 26 term of this given arithmetic sequence. For number 5, in the arithmetic sequence 4, 7, 10, 13, and so on, which term has a value of 301? So in this problem, we will not be looking for the n term because the n term is given, which is 301. So we will be solving for n to determine which term has a value of 301. The given, a sub n is equal to 301. The first term is equal to 4. The common difference is 3. So now let's us solve for n. Still, we will be using the same formula. So substitute the values of a sub n, a sub 1, and d. Now we have 301 equals 4 plus n minus 1 times 3. Distribute 3. That's why this became 301 equals 4 plus 3n minus 3. Combine the like terms. 301 equals 3n plus 4 minus 3, which is 301 equals 3n plus 1. So by symmetric property, we can interchange the terms of the equation. This will become 3n plus 1 equals 301. Transpose 1, it will be minus 1 in the right side of the equation. So this will be 3n equals 301 minus 1, which is 300. 3n equals 300. Divide both sides of the equation by 3. So you get n equals 100. This means that the 100th term of this arithmetic sequence is 301. Or 301 is the 100th term. We can determine the sum of a given arithmetic series. So for example, determine the sum of the arithmetic series, which first term is equal to 4, n is equal to 100, and d is equal to 3. So the common difference is 3, the first term is 4, and there are 100 terms. So instead of listing all those 100 terms down and getting their sum, we can actually use a formula for that which is s sub n equals n over 2 times 2a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So here, we substitute the values of a sub 1, n, and d. So the, the sum of the first 100 terms, s sub 100 equals 100 over 2 times 2 times 4 plus 100 minus 1 times 3. So 100 divided by 2 is 50, 2 times 4 is 8, 100 minus 1 is 99. 
99 times 3 is 297. 297 plus 8 is 305. 50 times 305 is 15,250. So the sum of the first 100 terms of this arithmetic series is 15,250. Another example, determine the sum of the arithmetic series, which first term is 7, and is 50, and common difference is 4.5. So our common difference can be positive, it can also be negative, and it can also be a fraction or a decimal. So we will be using the same formula from example 6. S sub n equals n divided by 2 times 2a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times t. Substitute the values of a sub 1, n, and d. We'll have S sub 50 equals 50 over 2 times 2 times 7 plus 50 minus 1 times 4.5. 2 times 7 is 14. 50 divided by 2 is 25. 50 minus 1 is 49. So 49 times 4.5 is 220.5. Plus 14, that's 234.5 times 25, that's 5,862.5. So the sum of the first 50 terms of this arithmetic series is 5,862.5. So I hope you get it. So class, the technique is that in each example, you may post the video, then you may solve the example again. So if you get the correct answer, then proceed to the next one. That's how you study asynchronously using an instructional video. So we also have the geometric series. So it's different from the arithmetic series. Geometric series is an ordered list of numbers in which each term after the first is found by multiplying the previous one by a fixed non-zero number called the common ratio, R. So the formula or the pattern is A, A times R, A times R square, A times R cube, A times R to the fourth, A times R to the fifth, and so on. So as you can see, that's the per six terms of the geometric series. For every integer n is greater than or equal to 1, the formula for the n term is a sub n equals a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. Where a sub n is the n term, a sub 1 is the first term of the sequence, and r is the common ratio. Example number one, for the geometric series, find the seventh and eighth terms of the geometric sequence 3, 9, 27, 81, and so on. So in this case, to get the common ratio, we are going to divide the second term by the first term, the third term by the second term, the fourth term by the third term, and so on. Since 9 divided by 3 is equal to 3, 27 divided by 9 is equal to 3, and 81 divided by 27 is also 3, therefore, the common ratio is 3. So here, we have 3, 9, 27, 81 for the first four terms, first, second, third, and fourth terms respectively. So to get the fifth term, multiply 81 by 3, so we get 243. So times 3 again, 729 for the 6th term, times 3, 2187 for the 7th term, and times 3 again, 6561 for the 8th term. So the 7th and the 8th terms are 2187 and 6561 respectively. For the second example, find the 15th term of the geometric sequence 3, 9, 27, 81, and so on. So as you can see, this geometric sequence is similar to the first example. We may use the same method. We may continuously multiply 3 to each term to get the 15th term. But it is easier if we're going to use the formula. 
So before we do that, determine the given purse. N is equal to 15. The purse term is equal to 3. The common ratio is 3. So we will be looking for the n term. For the solution, use the formula A sub n equals A sub 1 times R raised to n minus 1. So substitute the values of n, A sub 1, and R. You're going to have A sub 15 equals 3 times 3 raised to 15 minus 1. 15 minus 1 is 14. 3 raised to 14 is 4,782,969 times 3. That's 14,348,907. And that's the 15th term of the geometric sequence 3, 9, 27, 81, and so on. Third example, find the 10th term of the geometric sequence 4, 16, 64, 256, 1024, 4096, and so on. So the given n is equal to 10, the first term is 4, the common ratio is 4, 16 divided by 4 is 4, 64 divided by 16 is 4, 1024 divided by 256 is 4, 1496 divided by 1024 is 4. Okay, so we will be looking for the n term, a sub n, in this case a sub 10. So use this formula. A sub 10 equals 4 times 4 raised to 10 minus 1. 10 minus 1 is 9. 4 raised to 9 is 262,144 times 4. That's 1,048,576. So that's the 10th term of this geometric sequence. Example 4. Find the 15th term of the geometric sequence 2. 3, 4.5, 6.75, 10.125, 15.1875. So the common the common ratio, 3 divided by 2, that's 1.5, 4.5 divided by 3, that's 1.5. So n is equal to 15, a sub 1 is equal to 2, and the common ratio is r equals 1.5. We'll be looking for the 15th term. Use the formula again. A sub 15 equals 2 times 1.5 raised to 15 minus 1. 15 minus 1 is 14. 1.5 raised to 14 will give you 291.9292603. And when you multiply it to 2, the result is 583.8585205. So this means that this is the 15th term of this given geometric sequence. Example 5, in the geometric series 5, 10, 20, 40, and so on, which term has a value of 5,120? So in this case, we will not be looking for the n term. Instead, we will be solving for n. So for the given, a sub n is equal to 5,120. The first term is equal to 5. The common ratio is 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2, 20 divided by 10 is 2, 40 divided by 20 is 2. Okay, so we will be solving for n. So use the formula, a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So substitute the values of a sub n, a sub 1, and r. You're going to get 5,120 equals 5 times 2 raised to n minus 1. So in this case, we can divide both sides of the equation by 5. So we're going to have 1024 equals 2 to the n minus 1. And we can solve this using logarithms. So I hope you remember your lesson in general mathematics about logarithms. So this is an exponential equation that can be used can be solved using logarithms. So this will be expressed as n minus 1 equals log 1024 divided by log 2. So you can use your calculator to get the quotient of that. The quotient of log 1024 and log 2 is equal to 10. So now you have n equals 1 or n minus 1 equals 10. Transpose negative 1, that will be plus 1 to the other side of the equation. And then plus 1 is 11. N is equal to 11. So meaning to say, 5,120 5, is the 11th term 
of this geometric series. Okay? So, to solve for n, let's say you'll be solving for n, you can make use of the formula uh, n equals log a sub 1 over I'm sorry, uh, n equals log a sub n divided by log a sub 1 plus 1. Example 7, determine the sum of the geometric series which first term is 3, n is equal to 10, r is equal to 4. So, earlier, we can solve for the sum of an arithmetic series, we can also sub for the sum of the geometric series. So, meaning to say this geometric series has 10 terms and we're going to get the sum of those 10 terms. So, we can make use of the formula s sub n equals a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. So, so, so uh, just substitute the values of a sub 1, n, and r. You're going to have this. s sub 10 equals 3 times 1 minus 4 raised to 10 all over 1 minus 4. 4 raised to 10 is 1,048,576. And when you subtract it, from 1, you're going to have negative 1 million for 8,575. And when you multiply it to 3, you're going to get negative 3,145,725. Divided by negative 3, they are both negative, so the quotient will be positive. So, S sub 10 is equal to 1 million for 8,575. So, meaning to say, this is the sum of the first 10 terms of this geometric series. Okay, so here are some practice exercises. So as you can see, the given or the items 1 to 4 is about the arithmetic series and the given or items 5 to 8 are about geometric series. So to learn more about geometric and arithmetic series, here are some links that you can access. So in this session, there's a bonus topic, a bonus, another type of sequence, and that's the Fibonacci sequence. So this is very, very, very famous sequence. Each number in the sequence is the sum of the two numbers that precede it. So the sequence goes 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on. So how do how, you get the next term? So uh, 0 plus 1 is 1, and then 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 5 plus 1, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 8 is 13, 8 plus 13 is 21, 13 plus 21 is 34, and so on. So, continuing the process, you're going to get the next terms of the Fibonacci sequence. So, those are called Fibonacci numbers. Binet's formula is an explicit formula used to find the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence. It was derived by mathematician Jacques Philip Marie Binet, though it was already known by Abraham de Moivre. So, this is the formula F sub n equals. 1 plus square root of 5 all over 2 raised to n minus 1 minus square root of 5 all over 2 raised to n all over square root of 5. So this is much easier to solve if you will be using a scientific calculator. You can also make use of the math software's Mathway or Symbolab to solve this. It will be easier. Example 1, find the 10th term of the Fibonacci sequence. So since we will be solving for the 10th term, just substitute 10 to n. So now we have f sub 10 equals 1 plus square root of 5 all over 2 raised to 10 minus 1 minus square root of 5 all over 2 raised to 10 all over square root of 5. So f sub 10 or the 10th term of the Fibonacci sequence is equal to 55. 
55 is the 10 Fibonacci number. For example 2, let's have a higher end, find the 25th term of the Fibonacci sequence or the 20 p Fibonacci number. So substitute 25 to n, you're going to have f sub 25 equals 1 plus square root of 5 all over 2 raised to 25 minus 1 minus square root of 5 all over 2 raised to 25 all over square root of 5. And that's 75,025. That's the 20 pip term of the Fibonacci sequence, or the 20 pip Fibonacci number. So here are some practice exercises, items about the Fibonacci sequence. So just make use of the formula. Then for item number 15, so get the first 10 Fibonacci numbers, then just add those. So, if, But if you can find the formula to get the sum of n Fibonacci numbers, that's better. So it's up to you to make a research on that. So more about the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio because those two are related. So you can access this link. The first video is about the derivation of the Binet's formula. Then the second, third, fourth, and fifth video videos are about the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. I highly, I highly recommend this. I highly recommend these videos to be watched by you. This will make you appreciate mathematics more. I assure you. Then the next links are, are some topics, additional learning resources about Fibonacci sequence or Fibonacci numbers. So class, always remember, do mathematics to learn mathematics. Practice, improve, and stay curious. Keep safe, stay healthy. And God bless everyone. See you next time for our next lesson.